Good morning, everybody! Welcome back, everyone, to Altcoin Daily. Great to have you checking in today. My name's Aaron, and today I want to start the day off right. I want to get into some of what I think is the most important pieces of news that just hit the uh, news sites. Today we're talking about things like Coinbase's new custody service. This is a big, big green flag for us as investors. Uh, I want to talk about Cardano and Google in talks for a possible partnership. I'll be giving you the details on that. Uh, and also the European Union. They're the regulatory body of every single country in the European Union. And they just released a report that uh, they're basically, they're, they're pretty much supportive of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So this is a good thing. And I'll be giving you the details on that. Anyways, if you guys appreciate daily cryptocurrency content, give the video a like. It really does help us grow as a channel. And uh, yeah, hitting the like button is how we can also start the day off right. Let's get into it. I want to start by taking a quick look at the market. Bitcoin right now, it, uh, in the past day or two, it has shot up a few hundred dollars. Right now, at the time of recording, it's sitting at $6,600, up about 3.2%. And some of the big gainers in the last 24 hours are coins like KuCoin shares, Wax, Nulls, Ox, Neo, many of them are up 15, 17, 20%. So this is a good day in uh, cryptocurrency. And why not? About $40 billion got shot into the market. Uh, but if we look, if we take a look at, you know, what that means in the grand scheme of things, I mean, this is the last month in cryptocurrency. We can see, although obviously $40 billion in Bitcoin being up a little bit, obviously a great thing. In the past month, we are still a little bit down. Which brings me to my next point. I want to wish everybody out there who's been investing or just been involved in the cryptocurrency game for the past month and maybe even going forward to the next month, I want to wish you guys a big congratulations because in a year from now, in two years from now, you guys will be what uh, your friends will think of as savvy Bitcoin investors because right now, like it or not, this is where we are in the current market cycle. We're in the capitulation, the anger stage, maybe even the depression stage. But whether it takes six months or a year, we will be back to the belief, thrill, and euphoria stage once again. But whether that means Bitcoin's going to 50K, who knows? But either way, for maximum gains, this is when you invest. And that's what I'm doing. I mean, do whatever you want. You guys are making your own decisions. Anyways, let's get to the news. Like I said, I think these are pretty important things we're talking about today. I want to skip local news today. Of course, you guys know that my brother and I, were, we live in Los Angeles, but we're actually from Cleveland, Ohio. So obviously big news in LA, but we're going to skip this today because I want to cut right to the world news. The European Union report says cryptocurrencies unlikely to challenge central banks. So just like in America, we're waiting for the CFTC and the SEC. Everybody's kind of waiting for let's see what kind of regulations they put on cryptocurrency. Let's see how they define it. It's very important if you're looking to put major money in, and that's actually what a lot of people think are going to trigger major institutional money to come in, regulations from governing bodies. So in Europe, the EU parliament, they just released a report that's pretty positive uh, to cryptocurrency. Let's find out about it. Cryptocurrencies will not challenge the economic power of central banks, the European parliament said last week. In the latest monetary dialogue report issued on June 26th, the European Parliament Committee uh, on Economic and Monetary Affairs said that while cryptocurrencies have made financial transactions relatively safe, transparent, and fast, they pose no threat to sovereign currencies around the world. All right, so that's actually, it that was worded kind of funny, but that's actually really good news. So they said cryptocurrencies are relatively safe, transparent, and fast, and also they pose no threat to sovereign currencies around the world. And whether that last statement is true or not, this is a great thing for a governing body to release because we don't want, you know, the government to think that a huge, you know, overthrow is coming. Whether it's going to come or not, you know, this is just, we don't want that kind of uh, information out there. The analysis, the analysis, which was conducted by the Center for Social and Economic Research, a nonprofit research institute based in Warsaw, first recognized the positive changes cryptocurrency have brought to financial transactions, noting that they now are globally, 
are, are used globally, disregarding national borders. So yes, it's good for the world. Cryptocurrencies respond to real market demand, the analysis claimed, and they will have the potential to become a fully-fledged private money or even a permanent element in the global economy. However, the researchers said it is unlikely cryptocurrencies will threaten central banks and sovereign currencies and dismantle the existing monetary structures, especially in countries where the sovereign currencies are widely circulated. So like I said, overall good news. And why are they, why would the European Union take a uh, pro stance on a cryptocurrency? Well, there's many reasons why, but uh, one I want to focus on right now is because the European Union and many countries, they don't want to fall behind. They don't want to you know, have cryptocurrencies and blockchain pass their country by and then see other countries becoming leaders in something that could be very good for their economies. For instance, this guy right here, this is his LinkedIn profile. Don't need to know much about him. All you need to know is he is on the European Union Parliament. So he was one of the guys in charge of crafting the report. And this guy, he's very bullish on cryptocurrency, and you're going to find out why in a second. But basically, it's because he wants he wants the European Union to crush the U.S. in blockchain adoption. Let's find out. Uh, the experience of being here with you was really, really informative. As a regulator of the European Union, I got inspiration about the basic problems uh, the developments of blockchain applications face here uh, in Prague. Uh, we hope that uh, having uh, in our mind the blockchain resolution that the European Parliament voted uh, a day ago, uh, the environment uh, will be much more friendly for doing uh, blockchain applications here in the European Union. Union and it is our aspiration to make European Union the leader in the second machine age just like what the United States used to be in the era of internet. All right, very interesting stuff. If you guys appreciate me bringing you this kind of content, give the video a like and let's move forward. Now I want to talk about Cardano and Google in talks for a possible partnership. Let me give you the details on that. So. Charles Hoskinson, he's been making the news lately, all good things, uh, received an invitation um, by Google to come to the Google offices and speak to their leadership team and their developers on blockchain and specifically Cardano and Cardano's protocol. And Charles Hoskinson, he accepted the invitation and he presented a basic introduction and functionality of, the, of his virtual currency. Hoskinson also mentioned about the algorithm that Cardano follows, known as Aurora Boris. Uh, he also added that they are looking into, Card uh, Hoskinson added, they are looking into all the flaws that their current to be launched test network for experiments is having, and they will be rightfully directed. The conference explicitly sends out the message to the world that the future collaboration between Google and Cardano might be in the works. A questioner demanded to know how Cardano plans to out. Oh, so this was a cool thing. So some one of the uh, people in Google they asked uh, Charles Hoskins, "Hey, how do you plan to outrun Ethereum? Uh, you know, going by Ethereum's deep-rooted advantage in the blockchain world, since you know Ethereum first to market, they have you know majority market saturation. So how are you going to outdo Ethereum?" And Charles Hoskinson replied, "Quote." So, how many Java, C++, and Go developers are writing code on Ethereum? You can't. Ethereum doesn't have support for any of these programming languages. They can't even run a single viral app on their platform. If you look at the top 10 programming languages, none of them works on the system. So, by definition, all those developers aren't developing for the system. They have to go and learn new tools and new stuff. With Cardano, first off, we're backwards compatible, 100% are running on EVM. So basically what he's saying is because Ethereum, it has its own programming language, you know, 99% of the developers would, or all the developers have to learn a new language to even program on Ethereum, um, as opposed to Cardano, which Hoskinson thinks is in many ways better. You know, they can just go right to Cardano. So um, Hoskinson doesn't believe that Ethereum has too much of an advantage. He thinks they'll, they'll be able to catch up rather quickly. And also, when he says backwards compatible, that means any uh, cryptocurrency that was developed on Ethereum will easily be able to go over and work on Cardano as well.
Anyways, what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments. Do you think we could see a future where Cardano and Google work together? Or is this Google just le learning as much as they can and then they're going to invent their own cryptocurrency? Either way, I think this is a pretty good thing for the crypto world. Next, in a little bit lighter news, but still very bullish, real estate mogul and Shark Tank star Barbara Corrigan believes Bitcoin is perfectly suited, suited for real estate purchases. So we all know Barbara Corrigan if you watch Shark Tank. She's a, she's a tough old broad, and uh, she's in the real estate game, and she's made a lot of money, and uh, she recently said that Bitcoin would be perfect for real estate purchase, purchases. Let's find out more. Corrigan believes Bitcoin's home sales will become... Corrigan believes Bitcoin home sales will become commonplace in the near future. New York-based New York -based real estate mogul turned Shark Tank star Barbara Corrigan said in a recent interview with Money that she believes buying and selling real estate with cryptocurrency makes a lot of sense and is ideal for real estate. She stated, quote, I'm being, I'm being very optimistic because as a long-term play, it's perfectly suited for real estate transactions. She elaborated, it's peer-to-peer with no central anything, and that's why it's so powerful. The main idea is to eliminate the middle guy. One of the primary reasons she is so bullish on Bitcoin as, as a transaction medium is the long-touted benefit of cryptocurrencies, the peer-to-peer -peer nature which removes fees from the middleman and also increases privacy. The real estate mogul continued to talk about how cryptocurrencies could disrupt traditional banking. She said, quote, I really don't expect banks to be around 10 years from now unless they change their model. I don't see why it's going to be needed if Bitcoin does what I believe it's going to do. And then going further, she mentioned Bitcoin, it's not without challenges. Uh, Corrigan did provide some caveats with regard to her bullish comments about the cryptocurrency. Her main issue was around the volatility that has plagued Bitcoin, which is especially important given the size of real estate purchases and the escrow time it takes for a deal to close. She exclaimed, I could agree this week. I could agree this week that uh, that uh, the unit is worth three million. If by next Thursday the bottom falls out and now Bitcoin's worth two million, you know the three million dollar agreement it's useless. Yet the real estate mogul believes that technology and incoming cryptocurrency products products will solve these issues with time, and detractors will regret will regretfully miss out. All right, so this is good news from another shark. We've seen Mark Cuban express, uh, you know, pretty positive views on Bitcoin. Barbara expe express uh, pretty positive views on Bitcoin. So this is good news. Going forward, I want to get to our next piece of news, which actually I found out uh, because I follow Coinbase on Twitter. And I say this all the time, but if you guys want to get this news immediately, as quickly as you can, you guys need to follow your favorite cryptocurrencies and companies on Twitter. So you guys feel free to go over to our channel, Altcoin Daily IO, Altcoin Daily IO, and follow us and some of the cryptocurrencies that we follow. So I found this next piece. It's about Coinbase. And you guys probably heard peripherally about this, but let's talk about it. Coinbase's new custody service is now live. And many people believe this is a huge, huge thing. This is what people talked about many months ago. Coinbase's institutional product has become has begun accepting deposits. The exchange announced Monday. Coinbase Custody, aimed at an institutional hedge fund and other clients who can deposit a minimum of 10 million, accepted its first deposit last week, the company announced on Twitter. Now the new service is live for all customers. The exchange holds the exchange currency holds more than 20 billion in crypto assets, it, it said Monday a number the company hopes custody will help raise by another $10 billion. This was first announced November 2017. Coinbase custody client will pay $100,000 as a setup fee and a 10 basis point fee per month on the asset being held. Uh, the product was formally launched in May when the firm further explained its plans to work with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission regulated broker-dealer. The exchange went one step further earlier last month when it announced it was in the process of acquiring a broker-dealer license, an alternative trading system license, and an investment advisor license. Should the licenses be approved, which I have, I, I pretty much think that there's no reason they wouldn't be improved, approved, Coinbase will be able to begin offering securities on top of its current products. 
At present, Coinbase custody is open to clients in the U.S. and Europe. While no firm timeline was announced, the exchange said it hopes to open up to clients, up, open up to clients in Asia by the end of 2018. So what are the takeaways from this article? Well, we pretty much talked about it at the, at the top. Coinbase Custody, this is the service. It, it's aimed at institutional hedge funds and other big, big clients, and their minimum deposit is $10 million, and it accepted its first deposit last week. I mean, this news just hit today. Um, you know, this, this is a sign that this is a little green flag that big money is soon to enter the market, and there will come a time when Bitcoin at 6,000, Bitcoin at 7,000, Bitcoin at 5,000, Bitcoin under 9,000, we will never see that happen again. There will come a time when Bitcoin never is at these prices again. So be smart, cost average, let's do it. Our final piece of news today is pretty short. Self-proclaimed Satoshi says Bitcoin book in the works. So an individual claiming to be Satoshi Nakamoto has announced they are writing a book about Bitcoin and its history and will include personal stories of its creator. Although it's unclear whether the person is an actual is the actual in, inventor of the world's first and biggest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. So some guy says he is Satoshi Nakamoto. I have my doubts, but basically I thought this quote was interesting. Um, it's, he's basically saying why he picked the name Satoshi Nakamoto. He says, I wanted the most common name, which I knew no one outside of Japan had any recollection that Satoshi Nakamoto was the equivalent of John Smith. It took time for the public to come to this conclusion, but most with direct access to me had figured it out long ago. So one of the many things we'll be talking about in the book is about how he named himself Satoshi Nakamoto. And apparently it's a very common name in Japan. Anyways, Hope you guys enjoyed the news today. If you want to be a part of our altcoin daily community, videos on cryptocurrency every single day, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you found value in today's video, give it a like and also tell me what you think in the comments, whether it's going to be about the European Union or Cardano and Google, or maybe you want to even talk about LeBron coming to LA. I'm open to all takers. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you guys. See you tomorrow.